When comparing the specs between the cameras on today's hottest cell phones, one starts running into an awful lot of photography-specific terminology being thrown around. And the term that seems to have been all the rage lately is optical image stabilization, or OIS, if you happen to be into the whole brevity thing. Now, many phones offered today, such as the iPhone 6 Plus, are touting OIS as the next great thing in cell phone camera technology, and, well, it's not exactly new. And this form of stabilization has been readily available in ordinary cameras for some years now. But it's not all marketing fluff and unnecessary fanfare either, because what makes it special is not how new the idea is, but how small and efficient these systems have become. Now, in the past, the only image stabilization readily offered on cell phone cameras was that of the digital variety, which worked all right for minimizing that annoying bobbing effect in video footage, but did squat in the way of reducing shape or motion blur that is caused by camera movement. And this is where optical image stabilizers come in. They help to produce higher quality images by reacting to stimulus in real time, ensuring that the path between the lens and the sensor is perfectly aligned before the subject is captured, thus allowing you, the user, or an end software to more easily focus the image. So to accomplish this, manufacturers utilize highly sensitive gyroscopic sensors in any range of two to many which provide data as to the angle and movement of the camera, and some even exist specifically to provide extra functionality, such as improved vertical stability while taking panoramic shots. These directional sensors work in combination with tiny electromagnets that affect the angle of either the lens or the image sensor, depending on the type of OIS employed. So the first type we'll be looking at, lens-based applications, are found in high-end cameras and works by affecting the axis of the lens in response to movement, keeping the image tracked on the sensor as squarely as possible. The main advantage to this style is that the image seen by the user is as stable and clear as possible, but it fails in applications where no distance can be created between the lens and the sensor. So you're pretty much hooped if you want to jam this kind of tech into a cell phone. Which brings us to the second type, sensor-based or in-body stabilizers, which by contrast affect the angle of the image sensor in response to stimulus and have the added benefit benefit of being able to adjust the focal length between it and the lens as well. This type of stabilization can be compact enough to fit into small things like cell phones, while also being a much more affordable and practical option as it prevents the user from having to haul around a bunch of really heavy, not to mention expensive, camera lenses. Of course, that's not to say that sensor-based options are without their disadvantages. Since the image projected onto the sensor is not already stabilized, negative qualities such as reduced low-light autofocus performance can be an issue, especially in instances where there is noticeable lag in the electronic viewfinder or screen image. Also, these types of stabilizers are greatly dependent on their movement speed and the size of the lens in front of them, meaning to improve long distance and motion performance, at some point the lens must get bigger. And as many of us know, getting bigger to improve performance is simply not always an option. Speaking of improving performance, Cooler Master, thanks to great partners like them, Fast as Possible has evolved from this to the quality that you see today. And they do more to support grassroots efforts than you might realize. Right now, in addition to having their high quality cases, power supplies, and cooling products for your next custom built PC, they're running their Case Mod World Series. Entries close February 7th and anybody can enter. You do not have to be a professional case modder in order to have a shot at a prize because it's a multi-tiered competition. So, you know, you will actually be facing off against modders of your own caliber. There's around $25,000 US value in potential prizes, which in Canada now is like lots of more than 25,000 because our dollars are like Nyeh! and for the first time they're partnering up with Dremel to give away some really cool tools to the winners. So check it out at the link in the video description. Also check out the like button and press it if you like this video and dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you're Got suggestions for future, I almost did my other outro for my other channel. If you have suggestions for future fast as possible, then as always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one.